We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and get started in just a second or two. There's some people still at I can see them, even though I don't have my glasses on. They're still at registration and stuff like that. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Slowly but surely, we're getting started. I don't know whether they have them on or off because I can't see either way. All right. Just a few people. One, two, three. Bright lights. Welcome to the 2023 TWC Forum. This forum's theme is collaboration, innovation, improvement, and excellence, or excelling. You know, these are all things that we do subconsciously, but what we hope to do at today's forum is bring those subconscious thoughts to the forefront and have you making conscious decisions concerning all this. You know, the workforce solution system, we collaborate through the work that we all do. We're all part of a system that is one giant collaboration, if you think about it. The boards delivering service in the board regions because they know the needs of the local populations in those regions. TWC funding and coordinating statewide the efforts so that there's sort of this, the same delivery but customized to meet the needs of the individual um, local areas, that collaboration. Of course, we all partner with, or we could say collaborate, with the various stakeholders and service providers to meet the needs of the businesses, the job seekers, the students, and the families that we serve. The process brings together different voices and perspectives to meet a common goal of strengthening Texas's workforce, and that's what makes us a great place to be. Texas, that is, a great place to be. We innovate, and we're always looking for ways to improve what we're doing to deliver services better, to leverage the improved outcomes, and to leverage improved outcomes. During the pandemic, Workforce Solutions, the boards, and TWC led the way in innovation. We came up with creative ways to deliver service, with innovative ways to still meet the needs of our customers in a very dynamic, topsy-turvy environment. Whether it was cranking up the Wi-Fi, we've talked about this before, but cranking up the Wi-Fi so that people could park in the parking lot and still take training or some, or or work on their applications, or whether it was having safe ways to meet with our customers, or delivering services through our VR, delivering services curbside in a front yard so that there was social distance, but we could still face-to-face -face meet with our customers. Innovation is something that each of you does every day, but you do it subconsciously. You Little things, you change a form, you change how something is processed, you change how you greet a customer big things, we change what we're doing, what the focus is, so we can continue to be relevant. Improvement follows collaboration and innovation. The last 40 years, we've seen Texas evolve from a workforce that, is heavily, that was heavily critical on just a few industries to being one of the most diverse in the nation. This insulates our state, for the most part, from a lot of the economic shocks and provides greater opportunities for Texans to find work in a wide variety of fields. With a world that's rapidly changing with new technologies providing paradigm shifts to old workforce models, those of us who do not improve will not survive. And I don't believe that that's anybody in this room. Continued improvement leads to excellence or excelling. In the last few years, we've seen evidence of this abound in Texas. 
Our labor force now is nearly 15 million people with an unemployment rate of around 4%, and our monthly employment records for the last 18 months have been, we've set employment records for the last 18 months in a row, and it would go further back if it weren't for the interruption of those months during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic. Now, we're gonna shift gears a little bit because one of the things that we're all paying attention to because it affects us is what's going on in the legislature. So with that, I'm gonna call up Michael Brett, who's our Director of Government Relations, and have him provide us a brief update. And, I, and Mr. Chairman, I know that you're in the audience and Michael does have his official presentation tie on. So with that, Michael Brett. Join me in welcoming Michael Brett. Good afternoon, everyone. Do we have a clicker for the presentation? All right. Well, again, good afternoon. As Mr. Cerna mentioned, I'm Michael Brett, and I'm the Director of Governmental Relations at the Workforce Commission. And I did hear him say brief as far as the legislative update, so I will try not to go too long. But um, real quick this afternoon, I just kind of want to give you a quick idea of where we are in the, in the legislative session. So I figured I'd start with the legislative calendar. Today, we are 28 days from the end of the, of the 88th Texas legislature. So uh, deadlines are, start, are about to start hitting and we are officially into the home stretch of, of this legislative session. A uh, couple of upcoming deadlines that we, that we are looking at, speaking of deadlines, um, Monday, May 8th is, is already the last day for House committees to vote out House bills. And then that following Thursday, May 11th, is the last day that the, that the House can pass uh, House bills and House joint resolutions on second reading. And then the next day, the, Friday, May 12th, if a House bill has not completely passed the Texas House, uh, that bill is, is dead. Uh, then looking forward, Saturday, May 20th, is already the last day that the House can pass Senate bills. So really, we've got about three weeks, and if a bill's not passed, it's, it's not gonna pass this session. And then of course, we're looking, we're looking forward to Monday, May 29th, Memorial Day. That is the official last day of the legislative session. Uh, real quick, I, I wanted to run through some of the significant pieces of legislation that we are keeping track of this session. Uh, we're tracking a, just over 1,100 bills that affect either TWC directly or the workforce system as a whole, in whole or in part. Um, the biggest, most important, obviously, is the Appropriations Bill, House Bill 1. Both the House and Senate have passed their respective versions of the budget and have already moved the budget to conference committee. And the conference committee started meeting last week, uh, working out their differences between both the House and Senate uh, versions. In House Bill 1, as far as TWC is concerned, um, we had several provisions, uh, exceptional items that we requested, uh, $35 million in fiscal year 2025, uh, so the agency can continue to get their full amount of, ch of child care, uh, federal, federal child care funds, an extra $650,000 for the biennium to bolster the Civil Rights Division to help uh, staffing levels there, an additional $15 million in funding for the Jobs and Education for Texans program, an additional $7.5 million for the biennium for pre-apprenticeship career pathways, and a uh, $20 million request to fund the Industry Recognized Apprenticeship Program, and then also an additional $25 million for the biennium for the Skills Development Fund. I am happy to announce that in the budget process so far, the legislature has given TWC in both versions of the bill everything that, that the agency has asked for. There are two exceptions to that. 
and that is the seven and a half million request for um, pre-apprenticeship pathways. The House funded that request in full. The Senate funded it at 50%, so 3.75 million. So that will be one of the decision points the conference committee has to make is which version they go with or, or somewhere in between. And then the agency's request for an additional 25 million for the skills development fund. Again, the House funded it at 100% of the agency's ask. The Senate funded it just under 50% at 12.3 million. So we will see what the conference committee decides there. We had a few writers of note in, in, the, in the bill on the House side. The House has added a rider that would require TWC to conduct an inventory of all current apprenticeship and internship opportunities for people with disabilities. On the Senate side, that, that rider is the same, also a rider re requiring us to work with uh, TEA and the, and the Higher Education Coordinating Board to identify available funding sources that may be coordinated and streamlined uh, for the access of apprenticeship and work-based training. And, uh, a few, we had a few writers in Article 11, which in legislative parlance, they call that the wish list. So these, these items are in the bill, but not, they're still alive, but they're not officially adopted into the budget. Um, one, one writer of note is a, on the House side, is a writer to increase appropriations by 2.29 billion for the biennium for childcare infrastructure for children and families across the state essentially to replace the COVID federal relief funding that will expire at the end of fiscal year 2024. Uh, there is a rider uh, to increase TWC's general revenue appropriations by an additional five million to fund a culinary arts, food service management, and career and technical education program. And uh, another rider requiring TWC and TEA to collaborate on pre-K partnerships. Just a few more real quick. There is also a rider on the House side that allocates 5.5 million in fiscal year 24 and an additional 1.5 million in fiscal year 25 for the Texas Veterans Network. And, uh, and a rider to increase TWC's general revenue appropriations by seven and a half million dollars each year of the biennium to fund the Texas Manufacturing Assistance Center. Uh, to close it out, I was just going to run through a few, a few of the 1,100 bills that we are watching uh, of interest. Um, when it comes to child care, there's a lot. There was a lot of child care leg related legislation filed this session. Uh, there are a few that are still moving, these, these three uh, being kind of the most of note. First, House Bill 1615 by Representative Button, and that bill would require TWC to administer a pre-K pre partnership program. Uh, in coordination with TEA. Uh, House Bill 1979 by Representative Rainey. Uh, this is a pretty comprehensive bill relating to child care. Provisions of note, the bill would change the composition of local workforce boards, requiring that 10% of the private sector representation include owners or operators of child care businesses, and also require that the board membership include uh, someone who represents the child care workforce. The bill also makes several other changes, including uh, that the board posts specific information for parents regarding providers that board, uh, reg regarding quality, uh, capacity, wait list, and uh, asks that TWC develop training for the boards to as far as implementing any rule changes that the agency makes at the agency level. Uh, House Bill 3771 by Representative Julie Johnson. This, this bill would create a program by which if an employer is providing child care for their workers, it would create a state matching program where the state would match that investment of the employer. Uh, bills related to workforce development in general, House Bill 1602 by Representative Guillen deals with performance criteria for the award of AEL funds, and it would require TWC to uh, use performance measures in providing funding as well as give priority of AEL funding to providers that are consistently satisfying the commission's established performance targets. House Bill 2575 by Representative Button deals with the Workforce Diploma Pilot Program. Uh, the Workforce Diploma Pilot Program has been the subject of a couple of bills and riders over the past several sessions. This bill just refines the eligibility requirements for a provider to participate in that program. 
Uh, House Bill 3723 by Representative Gerds uh, establishes a rural workforce training grant program. So it would, it would establish grants specifically for the purposes of occupational training and related workforce development services in rural counties. Senate Bill 2315 by Senator Hughes. This bill sets up a task force to look at the consolidation of functions of workforce development programs that are housed both at TWC and the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, again, the bill just sets up a task force to investigate this, you know, what this could look like. There's also a corresponding uh, Senate concurrent resolution urging the United States Congress to make changes at the federal law that would actually allow for this consolidation. So the bill doesn't affect, wouldn't affect or require any of the consolidation to happen, just the study of what that could look like and recommendations to the legislature as what consolidation should happen if Congress passes legislation at the federal level to actually allow that to, to occur. A uh, couple of bills related to the Skills Development Fund and JET program, uh, or skills training and, and JET program. House Bill 1755 by Representative Button would create the Lone Star Workforce of the Future Fund. That bill would essentially create a training fund to be used um, with funding appropriated by the legislature. So it's not taking money from any existing program, but would get its own funding and it would provide grants eligible to entities to coordinate and deliver workforce training programs and high demand occupations. I can tell you with this, because I know that that description doesn't tell you a whole lot about what they're looking to do, uh, but what the authors have, have stated their intent is, is to essentially have this program fill the gap between projects that can be funded under the Skills Development Fund and those that are funded currently under JET. So to fund programs really focusing on the middle skills gap House Bill 3900 by Representative of Lambert deals with money awarded by the Skills Development Fund. That bill would cap the allowable use of uh, skills money um, for proprietary or production equipment purchases at 25%. Uh, and House Bill 4131 by Representative of Bales um, would make the allowable use of, would add to the allowable uses of JET funding uh, for uh, ongoing maintenance of technology uh, to support new new career and technical education programs, so essentially subscription services uh, for for training materials and equipment under the JET program. With that, that concludes my presentation this morning. Thank you, or this afternoon. <laughs> it's session. I'm sorry. I haven't. We're not sleeping much these days. Um, but thank you very much for your time, and I guess I'll hand it back over to Mr. Sterna.